Eating disorders and bodybuilding is a real thing. It's something that I experienced myself, which led me to depression, which led me to anxiety, which led me to lack of confidence in myself. And something that I haven't ever experienced was all of those emotions at one. It made me question my passions. It made me question who I am as a man. It made me question my own strength. And it's one of those situations where at the end of the day, you just feel helpless. And I've been around people who don't see this as a real situation. And kudos to them. You know, I, I do consider myself somebody who's mentally strong. And I love the sport of bodybuilding and I would always commit everything and anything I can to making me a better bodybuilder. But it's a disease and it's real. And it's something that I want to make sure that I take the time to explain to everybody. Because I can tell you this, at some point of a bodybuilder, you will face that temptation. And I'm making this video to hopefully help, whether it's first time competitors, have a better understanding of how to approach it and veterans to let them know that they're not alone. I mean, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't even know this was a thing when I first started. And I can tell you this much, it's real. It's a thing. And it's scary, man. I gained 22 pounds in two days. So back in 2019, I competed in my first ever bodybuilding show. It, I prepped for a total of 16 weeks to my first show, and I was victorious. I won the overall on my first ever show, and it got me nationally qualified to compete for my pro card a year later. But after that show, I wanted to compete, and I wanted to just feel the feeling that I felt again. So six weeks later, I stepped on stage at the 2019 Summer Shredding Classic and won the overall again, which earned me a sponsorship for Alphalete and some money to put in my pocket, which was a feeling that I honestly, I couldn't even wrap my head around. You know, the first time ever competing and I was falling in love with the sport head over heels. So after prepping for that grand total of 24 weeks, I had a realization that throughout that time, I was setting myself up for failure. Not only was I watching Eric the Electric videos, food challenge videos, not only was I writing down every single restaurant in, in different states that I was planning to eat at throughout the entirety of my prep, I would have earned an opportunity to just let loose. When in reality, now sitting in my shoes, you know, four years later, I can wrap my head around the fact that I was truly uneducated on the process of a reverse diet and what it could do to my body. And not only that, what it could do to my mental. So after the show, I ended up gaining 22 pounds in two days. I completely went off the rails, eating everything and anything I could. I started slowly making my way down the list. And before I knew it, I made my way down the list. And before I knew it, I didn't even recognize myself in the mirror anymore. Before I knew it, I didn't even want to look at myself in the mirror. I started hiding away and keep in mind I won the summer shredding classic the summer shredding classic is a gateway to social media it's a gateway to people who want to begin to see your life and all I did was want to hide and my reality quickly became I looked the best I've ever looked in my life to the worst in a very short amount of time you see bodybuilding it's weird, you know, it's one of those situations when you, when you get the leanest ever you have, it's like your body has a rubber band effect. It's like it's, it can shoot back much further than it ever looked in the past, right? And I easily shot back a lot further and the worst I've ever been in the past because prior to bodybuilding, I never ate the cleanest. I wasn't 100% on my diet all the time. I was a football player, I was a college kid. I would eat whatever I want. I think half of my diet was Chinese food and milk <laughs> and now, you know, I've realized that my body was at a sensitive point that, you know, at the end of the day, it's been to a place that it's never been, which then shot me back to a place where I've also never been. And I didn't have the education to prepare for that. That's what this video is for. It's education. You know, while at the same time telling my story that hopefully can help educate you guys and give you guys a peace of mind. After I gained 22 pounds in two days, like I said, I was hiding away from the world. I was simply afraid of showing myself. And I kept finding myself sneaking into the kitchen at night, knowing that I shouldn't be, knowing that I was still full, knowing that I was already sick to my stomach, but kept finding a reason to find 
is something unhealthy to eat. You know, I was a closet eater. I was waiting until my now fiance to go to sleep and I would just go and eat at two in the morning and eat everything and anything that I could, no matter how full I was. It was just an uncontrollable urge that at the end of the day, I just simply couldn't wrap my head around. What am I gonna do after the show? How am I gonna control myself after the show? And that's what I also wanna take a few minutes to explain is how to set yourself up for success post show so you can control your urges, be educated on those urges, and in the same breath, make sure that all of that hard work that you put toward that prep doesn't get ruined in just a short time frame. And that leads me to tip number one, plan for your success and not your downfall. So very similar how I did, planning for your downfall is imminent. Right? A lot of times people have the urge of thinking about the foods that they can't have from the start of their prep all the way to the end of the prep. So instead, try to build out a game plan for yourself that is gonna lead you to success while at the same time sprinkling in a little bit of flexibility. Right? So I'm a coach and this is what I do for a lot of my clients who are then reversing out of their diets. So rather than starting a lot of my clients off with just one free meal per week, I try to start off with two. And not only that, I transition from a lot of them who are having structured meal plans to an if it fits your macro approach, right? Something that's gonna give them some mental flexibility and also some overall satiation that they're gonna sit back and actually be able to control their urges long-term. So plan for your success, controlling urges, having flexibility, but at the same breath, keeping everything tight in terms of efficiency and mental sanity. Tip number two, give yourself a reason to stay on track. After a show, every single year, I always plan a vacation with my fiance or a group of friends to go to somewhere that's gonna force me to take my shirt off and be in the sun and hopefully have a nice drink in my hand, right? So do yourself a favor. Give yourself a reason to stay on track. Whether that's another show, right? A perfect example is the first show that I've ever done. I didn't go crazy at the first show because I knew that I was going to compete again. So because of that, I wanted to keep things tight. So. What did I do? I gave myself a reason to. A lot of times what people tend to lack is the motivation after a show simply due to the fact that there is no show in your sight. So do yourself that favor. Give yourself a reason to stay on track. Tip number three. This is important. Do yourself a favor and eliminate the urges that are right in your pantry. Come on guys, if it's within reach, get it out. I'm telling you guys now, if you're noticing any kind of inability to stay on track, there's no reason to have those urges every single day staring you in the face. If you have the cookies in the pantry, if you have the sugary drinks in the fridge, whatever it is, get them out of your house. Something that I've noticed, I tried this method last year when I was coming out of my show, but I'm still trying to learn how to control these urges. And what did I do? I threw every single temptation out in my house. So if I really wanted to cheat, I would have to get in my car, drive 10 minutes down the road, go to a McDonald's, go to an IHOP, because your boy loves his pancakes, and I would just have to actually have added time to think about it if I actually wanted to do it. Now thank God I am lazy. Otherwise, I would be fat and unhappy. <laughs> so again, control your urges, right? If you want to be able to think ahead, Try your best to eliminate any temptations that are staring you in the face on a daily basis. It took me a while, but I'm on the other side. I have better control over all of my urges, and these are the steps that I took in order to get there. So, hopefully this video helps you guys. Trust me when I say you're not alone in this situation. If you have ever had a binge eating episode before, trust me when I say do and make these steps in your day-to-day -day life, I can promise you this, you will begin to set the tone for a more controlled version of yourself, especially when it comes to you and these urges. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, share your binge eating stories below if you've ever gone through it yourself. I know I'm not alone in this situation, and I think the comments below could really help people, at the end of the day, not feel alone. And I remember, <laughs> I remember when I was dealing through it, and I was just looking up people who've gone through it themselves, and it definitely made me feel better. So let's bring the community together. I appreciate you guys, and I will see you in the next video. This video was special. <laughs>